Close your eyes and focus on your breath. Watch the breath all the way in, watch it all the way out. Allow the breath to be comfortable. You might experiment a little bit to see what kind of breathing feels best right now, whether long or short, heavy or light, fast or slow. Get a sense of the effect that the breath has on the body and see what kind of effect is useful right now. In other words, if you're feeling tired, you may want to breathe in a way that's energizing. If you're feeling tense, try to breathe in a way that's more relaxing. At the same time, make sure the mind doesn't go slipping out after other things. It probably will, but don't let it go for long. As soon as you catch it, bring it right back. Come right back to the breath. Drop whatever it was that you were thinking. This is how we train the mind. Ordinarily, the mind just wanders around as it likes all day long. In order to gain any use out of the mind, you have to train it, put it to use. And you learn this when you study. If you don't read the books you're supposed to read, you're going to get into trouble. If you don't think about this, the subject, you're going to get into trouble. But for the most part, outside of that, we just let the mind wander around as it likes. And that's, what, that's when it really does get into trouble. It goes after greed, it goes after aversion, it goes after delusion. These things cause trouble both for you and for the people around you. So you've got to train the mind. It's like having an, an animal in your house. You've got to train the animal so it doesn't create messes. And then you can put it to work and actually get some use out of having that animal there. So remind yourself that the mind needs training. If you want to gain any kind of happiness that's really solid or worthwhile, it has to come from a trained mind. We train it with generosity, we train it with virtue, we train it with meditation. All these things to get the mind to understand what's useful and what's not, and how to use its powers of thought to your advantage. And not just your own individual advantage, but the advantage of people around you. Because the happiness that comes from generosity, virtue, and meditation is not something that's just for you. It's something that spreads out to other people as well. It's not like the other kinds of happiness in the world where you gain something means that somebody else has to lose it. You gain a profit, somebody else makes a loss. With this, nobody loses. You freely give what you want to give. You maintain honor and principles in your behavior. And you can train the mind so that it doesn't go out of control. You're going to benefit. The people around you benefit, too. So the happiness that comes from these things is a special sort of happiness. It's not like the ordinary happiness of the world. It's something that really is noble, really is honorable, and something that really lasts. So if you want your happiness to be complete, make sure that it's based on these principles, generosity, virtue, meditation. These are the things that provide true well-being for you and for the world.